Okay, all this prep and everything we've done is the moment we've been waiting for is to actually finally get to roll some walls. And that's the funnest part. Now, we're going to just roll, you know, we've soaked this roller for about 10 minutes. And one of the things you want to do when you're getting started is, certainly with a dry roller, let's really get it filled with paint. Because a mistake, that's a common mistake, is people just start with a roller. If it's not pre-wet, um, the roller will get better as you go. But you'll actually find that the coverage is not good until your roller's completely saturated. So we roll in a couple different directions, cover it in paint, let it sit for a little bit. So this is ready, this is ready to go. For my corner here, I'm going to go ahead and utilize the little jumbo coater, the mini roller. Okay. Um, with the outside frame on the big frame, it will rub this other wall. So I go ahead and use this mini right here for this first run. And again, it's the same roller. It's the same roller that we have on our big roller, so the nap will be the same. We're just, we're just using this for this tight space. Okay, so I'll roll this. Now, all this is on one principle, what we call wet edge. Okay, we've got to keep a wet edge on this wall once we start this wall. Even this little edge that I'm painting right here. This dries before I get into it with some more wet paint. This might dry, especially if I have like a heavy roller run like this. I don't know if you can see this on the video, but if I get a little heavy and that dries, that's going to show through. So we need to make sure that this just keeps wet, wet, wet. And the only way you can do that is start at this corner using the matching roller set like we have. And now we're going to just progress down the wall. I'll leave this here to get around the outlets and some of the smaller stuff. I'll get that on the way. When we are rolling the walls, there's some principles. Whether you're using a 9 inch roller, an 18 inch roller, or a 14, we're going to get a certain amount of paint and we're going to put it on a certain amount of the wall. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to go up. Now I lost a lot of the paint right here, but as I come back down through it, I'm going to pick up some of that heavy and I'm going to move it down here. Then I'm going to do a couple up and down motions just to spread. So we place the paint, then we're going to spread the paint. And you'll notice I'm standing a certain distance from the wall. Even if I wanted to, I can't hit that crown. So I position myself where that's the top of my run, that's the bottom. I'm not bending my back, I'm not killing my shoulders, and I'm just letting the roller spread the paint. Now that we've got it spread, we're going to smooth. So we're going to just let that roller just ride the wall. Nice uniform spread, nice uniform rolling, uniform texture. My edge is nice and wet. I'm going to add some paint to it, and this paint is just going to blend in. If I would have to get a phone call and I stop and I come back, or if I go back into this now that this has started to dry, and it dries that quick, so I cannot go back into this old paint without retexturing. I'm going to put a different texture because it's stickier. So don't go back. Smooth it and keep moving forward. Now we have a halogen light. I always like to paint toward the light, not have the light behind me. It illuminates the wall a lot better. I can see my wet paint on the wall even though we're painting a similar color. Hey, if you got a bad back, this is the method to adopt because it's just easy. Okay, and again, spread another little section. I'll go slightly over the last. If you can see this up close, you know what I'm talking about, but this is really this all wet each section. This all is just continually wet, continually uniform texture. I'll roll this, and you can roll this as many times just as long as you're letting the roller put the texture on. Okay. I keep my paint ahead of me most of the time. There's no real right or wrong on that. But again, start in the middle, catch that coming down, spread it. Even this big roller I get. I'm going to go around these outlets. I want a little bit of the paint off of the roller so I can not load it up here. And these are the kind of imperfections that a painter can actually put into the wall. And it's, if 
one of the things that commonly we have to repair. We have to sand off that texture. We have to patch in. And so, this just is going to be a picture perfect wall. See, and we're almost halfway across here. So the actual putting of the paint is really not that important as the preparation. And it sounds cliche, but it's really true. You can't cover anything up with paint, really. Well, you can't cover texture. But we'll see a lot of places where people take their big roll around these outlets. They get, you know, they get a big thick place like this, or get. A whole lot of texture, say they got a heavy roller, and we look at that. Now, if I don't roll through that, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but that's the kind of things that will make the walls look terrible. So, you want to avoid that, and you want your painters to avoid that. And the only way they can do that is with this procedure. With the mini roller, with the 14 inch roller, ease up on your paint around these. I can go this way, it doesn't matter. I can get my little roller out here, and you notice we put a little bit of tape on the outlets. I'm not going to paint them, but if I happen to slip, it takes a whole lot longer to clean up one outlet than it does to tape every single one of them off. Let's do it. And there I just did what I just said. <laughs> I just hit the, while well, I was talking, and not focused. Okay, now I have a smaller little outlet down here. I may get out the mini roller just for this section. But one thing I want to do before I do that is get a new wet edge. If I just go down there now, that's already been drying. This could be dry by the time we get back to it. So, obviously this would be a, a little bit simpler procedure if we had two people. But it certainly could be done with one. Now I'm going to grab my little roller just for around these small, this small area. Again, it just all blends in. I can even use this little roller to kind of nicely blend in my, for my big roller. Again, this is a light uh, foam jack, so you can't really remove those, but we also don't want to hit them with the roller, so I like this small roller for control when I'm around these areas. I went ahead and put a little tape on there just in case you hit them. Of course, you can wipe it off with a wet rag anyway. But, okay, so we finish this area. Now again, I've got to be concerned about the drying that's going on on that leading edge. That's the main thing that's easy to happen, but it's also easy to avoid if you do the right procedure. So I've got to get back on that right away. While this is drying, get some more wet paint into it on that edge. And I don't want to go back too far and smooth right there because I know that's been drying while I was messing around down there at the bottom. So we got right back in, we got a nice new wet edge. This is really progressing nicely. Okay. Smooth. 
best result out of the products you buy from us. 